Islam Makhlchev does not belong in a world title fight. Islam Makhlchev is not the number one contender. Islam Makhlchev is not ranked high enough to qualify for. Islam Makhlchev, more than anything, does not deserve it because he didn't have high enough of competition. Now, is anything I just said true? And if you think it is, could you prove it? The guy is 16 and 1. Have you ever heard, okay, if we're asking Islam questions, let me ask you a couple more. Have you ever heard Islam, including through the media, complaining about something? Have you ever heard Islam demanding something? Have you ever heard of Islam renegotiating something? Have you ever heard Islam do anything other than specifically what he was asked to do? And I've got to tell you, I don't know how much I love the concept of he didn't fight hard enough guys. There are not easy guys in the UFC. Just so you understand, this isn't where you go to learn how to fight. This is go once you're proven. You don't know who you're going to draw into. And particularly early on, the guy you do draw into doesn't know what he drew into because he doesn't know you any more better than you knew him. There's only been a couple of guys, I could count them on one hand, easily, probably three fingers, but only a couple of guys where Dana White has ever come out and openly said, I'm going to bring him up slow. I have a plan. Dana said that about Conor McGregor. Now, that happened. Conor was given some very easy fights, some very favorable fights. We thought. In hindsight, one of those easy fights was a young man out of Louisiana named Dustin Poirier. Another one of those easy fights for Conor McGregor was an undercard bout with a 20 year old kid. They Max Holloway. So nobody's career has gotten better with time. Nobody's career has been more of a fine wine than that of Conor McGregor. Isn't it a little early for us to say that about Islam? I'm only asking the question. 16 and 1. 17 training camps. 17 weight cuts. 17 airplanes. 17 hand wraps. 17 times you walked through that curtain and you got it right, 16. Is it possible to say that these weren't hard enough? Whose spot would you rather be in? Because nobody's questioning Charles and whether he belongs there. Nobody's questioning if his matches were hard enough. Jimmy Christmas, his matches were so hard, he lost eight of them. He's in the conversation for the greatest ever, and he belongs there. I've never heard a, a top list. I mean, people have removed BJ Penn from it. That's almost blasphemy, but they have. The top list is Khabib, Charles, and you have a few in the society saying Charles Khabib. I really think that has to be proven this weekend. But even if Charles gets the jump on Islam, he still has eight losses. Now, that doesn't appear to be a problem for anybody, and I'll share with you it's not for me either. When it's iron on top of iron and you're fighting the absolute best guys, I don't expect you to win them all, particularly over the course of a decade, which is how long Charles has been here. But how could you tell me that you'd rather have Charles's record? You'd rather have those eight losses than that of Islam. How can you tell me Charles being ranked number one in Islam number three? Boy, that's close. There's a big difference in one and three. Don't think that I don't understand that. Can we agree those are both fantastic rankings? People are saying that Islam didn't beat the appropriate competition. I've seen all of Islam's fights. And quite frankly, I only know two guys that he fought. I, I watched them all. But so maybe that strengthens the argument that he wasn't in there with the right guys. But I do remember he fought a good friend of mine named Dan Hooker. And I know that Dan Hooker was ranked number five in the world. And I know that Dan Hooker, at least according to one licensed judge, beat Dustin Poirier. I know Bobby Green is as physically and mentally as hard of a draw as anybody in the UFC. If you're as good of a fighter as Bobby Green, you don't have to get any better. You could be the champion. You will make a whole bunch of money. And I know both of those fights cumulatively, cumulatively did not equal one round. How many top guys do you got to beat? I mean, it seems like a very hard bar. It seems like something very hard that we're judging Islam by. When I got in the UFC, guy, guys, was 2005. Now, in 2005, it was a very different time. 
2005, there was 11 events that year, but that was massively more. We, we either had five or six events every year from 2001 on up. Something called the Ultimate Fighter came around, changed our industry. We got to 11 events. From 11 events to 22 events to what you guys know now. High 40s, low 50s, almost every week. But when I came over, any weight class that you were, if you won three in a row, you were likely fighting for a title. There was not very many guys who did win three in a row and then did not fight for a title. It's just known within the industry. You beat a killer guy your first time out, great job. You beat an okay guy, great job. You do it again, great guy, killer guy, okay guy, great. You do it a third time, you're fighting for the belt. So it was just a very different time. And now it seems, I mean, I'm looking at Islam, who's won 16 in a row. That's not correct, is it? See, because Islam lost his first fight. He got knocked out. But then if you look a little closer, it wasn't his first fight ever. It was his first fight within the UFC. So feel free to correct me. But it's still been a number of years. It's been in main event spots. It's been against anybody they ask him to compete with. And Islam did something one time. But it changed the way I look at Islam. And it told me everything I have to know about him. Which is Islam was said to be going to fight for the world championship. Something happened. Something happened where they needed Islam and he said no, he didn't do it. So all of a sudden, he's not going to fight for the championship, he's going to fight Benny Darush instead. Fine. But Islam didn't complain. He didn't even argue. He didn't really appear that he cared. But that changed things for me. Because now I'm dealing with a competitor. First and foremost. Can I beat you or can you beat me? And whatever the risk, I'm willing to go out and find out because I want to know the answer. I love guys like that. I have not seen Islam's demeanor change now that he's fighting for a world championship. I just haven't seen it. I haven't seen Islam's demeanor change knowing that on less than 24 hours notice, he might just be in there with Charles. He might be in there with the pound for pound great. I just haven't seen him care. So when you talk about who he fought, if this wasn't his doing, if a lot of those type guys were called and offered, right? Imagine if they did this to Chemayev, and many have tried. We know how good Chemayev is. We know. But there was a period of time where you could pretend that he wasn't. There was a period of time where we could pretend he didn't have the hard competition. Now we're finding all the hard competition, ducking him, avoiding him, and the guys that he does get in there with, he gets rid of quick. Why are we so accepting of how great Jemayev is, but we're not as accepting of where Islam is? 5-0 is very impressive record in the UFC. 16-1 and overall. Very impressive record for mixed martial arts. Aren't we being just a little bit tough on Islam Makhlchev?